So I played baseball a lot as a kid. I mean, a lot of us did. Most of us did. And if you didn't, here is a little piece of advice that my dad gave me growing up. He said that if I went into a game and got a hit, it took him out of skill. Which, again, baseball being a very hard sport was very, very true. Now, he said if I got a hit in two consecutive at-bats, he said that was luck. And then for the third time around... Well, it never happened because I was pretty dog water at baseball for the most part. So that's kind of when the uh, words of advice started and stopped from him. But the point being is that it translates to betting as well. So the first time around, if you have your first time getting into betting, things start to go well. Okay, you know, maybe you did your proper research. Things went kind of well. Then if you start to pick it up and you get hot, of course, there's going to be some luck involved along the way. And that is where we are currently at on the victories and Vibes channel as we enter into week five, the Sunday matchups for week five here on the channel today. Got a little bit of a different setup for you as, of course, I am your host, Rob Hill, bringing you through week five NFL Sunday already, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a wonderful week. The Vibes have been immaculate over here, here and my good friend Stanley two times. Uh, not that Stanley is a two-timer, uh, at least I hope not, but uh, yeah, just slowly trying to uh, to abs add some things to the uh, to the laboratory here as we uh, move things along as well. Um, also making my mic now visible uh, as well. So shout out to my little snowball here in my hand. But uh, yeah, recapping everything from this past week of NFL bets that you and I had. So going back to Thursday night, we of course had another winning day. Another money in the bank night thanks to Kirk Cousins. Uh, as we took over his 229 and a half passing yards. Uh, yeah, if you actually ended up doubling that or maybe even alternating that to 300 or 400 yards. Now, if there is a 500 yard book somewhere that could have that. Um, yeah, you'd be uh, you'd be rolling in dough uh, right about now. That was an easy cash. It led to the Falcons money line as well. It was a really, really awesome uh, Thursday night game that we were blessed with. Unfortunately, Bucky Irving did not cash us. He fell a carry short. However, between him and Tyreek Hill's uh, catch from the Monday night game or lack of catch, we've actually been hooked on almost going perfect um, over our last two videos of plays. Overall in the year, again, guys, if you are new here to the channel, um, I'm very transparent with all of my picks. Uh, since I have been posting, we are now 8, 4, and 1, 0 and 1 on parlays, but we are currently up almost four and a half units uh, just through three weeks of making plays so far. So we're on a very good trajectory so far. As I am recording this on Saturday afternoon, I do have an announcement to make. The doctor is in. He has made a visit to the laboratory and he does have a message for you guys. And of course, that is always to make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you do like our content here on Victories and Vibes, as always, please leave your thoughts and your bets for this upcoming week and what you think in the comments section below. But you are not here for shameless plugs. You are here for some winning bets. So let's hop right into it. And let's say let's get off to a fast start. With Jordan Addison, over 37 and a half receiving yards, minus 115 on FanDuel. Overall for Addison, uh, got off to a very shaky start to start the season uh, for the second year wide receiver for Minnesota. He has played in just two of the four possible matchups so far for the Vikings this season. Now, typically sports bettors alike would not necessarily go into any type of upcoming matchup and try to target wide receivers against the New York Jets. That being for good reason, as for Addison himself and this Jets core along this season, they are actually second best in the entire NFL in limiting wide receiver yards per game, uh, just allowing 124 yards per game to wide receivers. So the question is, Rob, why do we take Jordan Addison? The answer is very simple. You add a Sauce Gardner plus a Justin Jefferson, and that equals a lot more opportunity for Jordan Addison to line up in the slot and for him to get a much more opportunity out deep for Sam Darnold, who has been dropping back and letting it rip uh, so far this year for the Vikings. Addison, who is averaging 17.2 yards per catch, which would be fourth highest in the NFL if he qualified for games played. Uh, last year in his breakout rookie season, he actually had hit this number over 37 and a half in 11 out of the 16 games that he has played. Addison also coming off of a week in which he uh, saw himself at four catches for 72 yards. So this is a very good formula um, as well. Now, despite both of these teams playing across the pond, this being a 30 game. So 
whenever you get those neutral sided games, it's always kind of like a flip of the coin in terms of how the weather is going to be and how the game is generally going to play out. Typically, it's not going to be a high scoring free for all type of matchup. Uh, but with Sauce Gardner being occupied uh, with Justin Jefferson having to take down the most talented wide receiver in the NFL, give me Jordan Addison with his talent alone. 37 and a half yards is far too insulting for clearly the second best offensive player in this Minnesota Vikings offense. And now moving on to prop number two, we're going to get some back-to-back -back wide receiver plays here before I end up giving a couple of spreads and then one final player prop for you on Sunday night, as well as dipping our toes once again into our hot tub parlay for this upcoming Sunday. Uh, but we are going to, uh, we're going to be going to Soldier Field for this one, uh, specifically to these Bears to the right of me, uh, talking about their star wide receiver in DJ Moore, looking at DJ's receiving yards for this upcoming week at 51 and a half receiving yards, minus 110 on FanDuel. Casual NFL fans know that this is going to be a revenge game part two for the seven-year All-Pro wide receiver in Moore. Two years ago, as everyone knows by now, he was traded for first overall pick Bryce Young. It's been very clear for Chicago fans that they have uh, ended up on the right side of this trade. More after uh, receiving nearly 1,400 yards last year in his first year uh, for Chicago, has not had greater pastures so far with first-year quarterback and Caleb Williams. Now, of course, that does take time. That does take a collective agreement uh, from personnel on down to really get used to one another, especially in a new offense led by Shane Waldron. As a matter of fact, the Bears offensive players led by DJ Moore and Caleb Williams talked to Shane Waldron this past week about some disagreements and misconnections that Moore and Williams have both had. Now, again, much like the Addison line, just on talent alone, this is exactly why we are targeting DJ Moore on Sunday. Outside of the narrative, of course, former team, DJ Moore, I'm sure he's got some gripes with Dave the Tepper, like most Carolina fans and most football fans do, as a matter of fact. It's also a very good matchup as well for Moore, as despite Carolina just being 11th in the league in yards allowed per game through the air, they are actually allowing the 14th most yards per game in terms of allowing yards in the slot. And that is something that I think in terms of having the confrontation at Hallis Hall this week uh, between Waldron and his players already, I think things are going to get a lot more creative for more overall uh, in this upcoming game against the Panthers. The Bears also, despite having a positive game script, they are four-point favorites against Carolina uh, going into this matchup. They're going to need more and the Chicago offense to fire on all cylinders behind Caleb Williams as Bears fans are still waiting for that Williams and Moore first breakout game connection. Anticipate that this upcoming Sunday as the Bears look to take down Carolina. Going into prop number three on this upcoming Sunday, we have ourselves a grit and grind AFC North old school football style matchup. And we are going to dip our toes into prop number three, and that is a combined spread plus prop. So if you guys remember back during my first video two weeks ago in week three, I took a very similar line to this. I took T Higgins over three and a half uh, receptions and to cover plus three and a half against the Carolina Panthers. That was a no sweat in that game. Looking for similar results in this one as well, as we are looking to go to Cincinnati for uh, Justice Hill uh, with over two and a half catches and plus three and a half for the Baltimore Ravens. You can find that at plus 140 on DraftKings for the combined spread and player prop for that. Uh, like I said, for this Baltimore Ravens offense overall this season, it has been a tale of two different seasons so far for Baltimore and Cincinnati. The Bengals are more or less trying to keep their season alive with their backs up against the wall at one and three, with the Ravens coming off of not just their best win of the season, but arguably one of the best wins in the NFL all year last week, dominating the Buffalo Bills 35 to 10 in primetime. We rode this momentum train just a couple of days ago with the Atlanta Falcons going into their primetime matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is why I'm leaning the Ravens to at least cover a plus three spread out in Cincinnati this weekend. On top of that, uh, with Lamar Jackson, the reigning MVP, he has owned uh, Bengal territory since he has put on a Ravens jersey. Lamar with a career 97 career passer rating, 14 touchdowns and just four interceptions and has won eight out of his nine matchups against Cincinnati in his career. Overall for this Bengals defense as well, still a lot of eyebrows being raised. Uh, a lot of health concerns as well for uh, the secondary for the Bengals as well going into this matchup. 
Cincinnati is allowing the fifth most yards per game on the ground this season, and the Baltimore Ravens are astonishingly dominating the ground game, as to everyone's surprise in the NFL this year, with 220 yards per game via the ground. The Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson duo, who has been unstoppable, and the next closest team to them being the Green Bay Packers is actually a whole 56 yards per game less than what Baltimore is averaging going into this matchup. Feel very confident about the Ravens building on them, their momentum. And for Justice Hill overall with his two and a half catches, he has been targeted at least six times in each of the last three weeks from Lamar Jackson. And the Ravens wide receiving tree is once again flying up, out, and all over the place. But the one consistent factor has been Justice Hill. He actually leads the Ravens in successful completion catches and 89% of his targets have resulted in completions. And amazingly, for a guy that is considered a traditional third down receiving back, is actually second on the entire Baltimore squad in targets per game at right around five and a half on the season. Two and a half, pretty juiced, which is why I combined it with the plus three and a half. Go get yourself a nice, juicy plus 140 burger this upcoming Sunday in Skyline Chili City in Cincinnati, Ohio. Not had Skyline Chili, but I've heard very good things. We're not looking to have that, though, uh, this weekend. But we are going to take ourselves for our uh, one of our last two props of the day. Uh, we're going to take our first and actual spread. No alt spread on this one. And it might be a little bit of a controversial one. Um, I am huge on keeping people's jobs and retaining them going forward. But uh, for this individual, uh, his job might be cooked if he does not end up with a victory in Duval this upcoming Sunday. Of course, I am talking about the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. And I will be backing the winless Jags, the only winless team in the NFL this year, taking the minus three on FanDuel at minus 110. You can find your best value there. It is really do or die uh, time in Duval County in Jacksonville. That is to say the least. An 0-4 start. This is the third year for Doug Peterson under the Jacksonville Jags. Uh, they had a miraculous uh, first year under Peterson where they won their last six games of the season to sneak themselves into the playoffs and pick up a playoff win with Trevor Lawrence. And ever since then, it's been a living hell and letdown for Jacksonville Jaguars fans. The one thing that is going for them, though, is their career dominance of the Indianapolis Colts over the last 10 years. This is one of the most remarkable stats in the NFL. And if it wasn't for all of our great scientists and doctors on the case study for this, I would not have been able to believe my, this stat for sure. Since 2014, the Indianapolis Colts, keep in mind a division rival that plays twice against Jacksonville every year, has not won against the Jags since 2014. I did not have a hair on my nutsack, ladies and gentlemen, in 2014. Point being is that for whatever reason, whenever something like that is that psychologically rooted and that deep in a franchise, it's a hard monkey to get off of their back. And I have a hard time seeing that monkey get tossed off their back this weekend in Jacksonville for Indianapolis simply because of the fact that they've been injured to all hell. And the one side of the ball that they are starting to retain some health on, they are completely haven't performed whatsoever. Between their secondary led by uh, Kenny Moore, they've actually allowed... Uh, in terms of DVOA, they are bottom 10 in DVOA for uh, passing yards. And then on the ground, they're actually bottom six in DVOA for the Indianapolis Colts, which has been very unlike them. It was their calling card for their playoff berth that they had last year. And I don't see that continuing very much against Jacksonville, who despite having a woeful offense averaging below 14 points per game, through their first four weeks, they put up 20 last week against a stout Houston defense and had some of their elite playmakers, such as Brian Thomas Jr., Christian Kirk, Travis CTN, and Tank Bigsby, all have positive days, including Trevor Lawrence, who is going to be the key to him covering the spread for us, actually had his first game without a turnover in his last nine games. So if T-Law can continue to trend in a positive direction, the boogeyman of the Jaguars at home for whatever reason continues to haunt the Colts, I expect a lucky horseshoe to reverse and have itself facing the Jacksonville Jaguars this upcoming Sunday. And if we are sitting pretty for this and we are on cruise control, we are kicking our feet up on the dashboard, we can drive ourselves right into the Steel City for a Sunday night football matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and Pittsburgh Steelers, which is where we are going to find prop number five, our last one, before we get into our hot tub touchdown parlay on the channel as we are going to talk about a running back 
in this matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Najee Harris over 66 and a half rushing yards for the fourth year running back in Harris. Now, typically I have been a religious Najee fan, skeptic, hater, whatever you might want to say, but I am a truther at the end of the day. And that is all we spit here on victories and vibes is the truth and nothing but the truth. And the numbers do not lie. And the 66 and a half rushing total was certainly a surprising one, given the circumstances of what this game is going to entail on Sunday night. What I mean by that is the game script overall for this game is considered a three-point spread in favor of the hometown Pittsburgh Steelers, despite there being a massive injury to Jalen Warren, the usual backup running back, who has a 55-45 snap share with Najee Harris not being available for Sunday night. On top of that, Dallas has also been horrifically bad against the run this year so far, a calling card for them last year and where they were top five in the NFL last season in yards allowed per game on the ground. That is now juxtaposed and done a total 180 so far this year and have actually allowed the fifth most yards per game on the ground to opposing running backs. Now for Najee Harris being a bell cow back, he has been for the most part of the season. Again, despite splitting third down carries with Jalen Warren, who is not available, that is going to be a Justin Fields and Najee Harris led backfield. Mike Tomlin has been able to squeeze three wins out of this uh, Pittsburgh Steelers lackluster offense due to two things, wonderful coaching and a phenomenal defense. The Steelers have been able to have an impressive run game. They are currently 10th in the NFL in yards per game on the ground. They're surprisingly fifth in time of possession. If the Steelers want to capitalize on getting their fourth victory in their last five contests, they're going to have to dominate time of possession. And that is by keeping Najee Harris on the ground and getting him as many carries as possible. For Harris, I don't expect him to break out any 20 or 30 yard carries. It's going to be a slow, slow grind to the top for him to hit this line. However, his uh, rushing attempts line for this game, as a matter of fact, being at 17 and a half. In every game that Harris has had at least 17 carries this season, he has cleared this line in all three games. Looking for Najee Harris to once again do that on Sunday night football. Looking for a perfect 5-0 and day. But before we do, before you guys skedaddle on out of here and go run off and tell all of your sick, degenerate friends about all of this cash-making picks that I decided to give out to you guys today, indulge me in taking a step into our hot tub parlay that we are going to cash this upcoming Sunday as well. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be the thumbnail of the videos you guys can see. We are going to be going into the quarterback hot tub looking for a little bit better luck there. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and Justin Fields, we are all targeting to go in one after the other. And they'll all celebrate together as you can get a plus 1125 value on FanDuel for Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, and Josh Allen in any time touchdown. I'm going to record that as a unit as well. Going to put a full unit on that. Going to put a full unit on the rest of these plays as well. Something I don't normally do, but uh, Lamar... Allen and Fields all have a touchdown scored in their last matchup against the teams that they were going up against this upcoming Sunday. So I feel very confident that things are going to progress well for those quarterbacks this weekend to sum up week five. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. one.